À la claire fontaine, m'en allant promener, j'ai trouvé l'eau si belle que je m'y suis baigné. Il y a longtemps que je t'aime, jamais je ne t'oublierai. Sur la plus haute branche, un rossigne chantait. Chante, rossigne, chante-toi qui a le cœur gai. Il y a longtemps que je t'aime, jamais je ne t'oublierai. Hi, welcome to episode 42 of The Gentle Knitter. My name is Nicole, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm coming to you from the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe, also known as Ottawa. It's the beginning of May, and I'm really excited to be here with you, to catch up with you. It's been a while. Uh, last time I recorded was during Vlogmas, and it was a quiet winter. It was a really tough winter. Some of you might have seen an Instagram post that I did. Unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to our darling Marcel. And that was, as you can imagine, um, truly heartbreaking. Early February, we noticed that he, there, he wasn't quite himself and uh, it was a very, very quick, extremely quick sort of onset of a few symptoms that made us think that maybe there was something going on. So we took him to the vet and uh, they did um, ultrasounds and x-rays and all kinds of tests and they did see masses um, that pointed towards uh, some type of cancer and you know after consulting with the vet and given his age he was almost 11 which is quite old for uh, for a big dog we were very very grateful that it was very quick in terms of his decline so there wasn't really any hesitation about what needed to be done and most importantly we feel like um, he didn't suffer very much that it was uh, it was a very very peaceful and gentle uh, goodbye that we um, we gave him so we were there and uh, were able to you know 
um, give him all the love and send him off and um, yeah it was it was <laughs> as you can imagine it was very very difficult it's still very difficult we really really miss him um, and uh, plan on you know uh, adopting another dog probably uh, in the fall so that will be uh, something we were very much looking forward to but in the meantime you know we still have some some grieving to do and uh, certainly it's a it's a huge loss i think that um, probably longtime viewers will know that um, marcel held a, a huge huge uh, place in our hearts and uh, was a really special boy and uh, anyway so so that was is very very sad and hard but but you know we are uh, taking good care um, health wise I'm feeling a lot better um, you know knock on wood I have gotten a lot a lot of very lovely um, thoughtful messages over the last few months and I appreciate everybody who's gotten in touch and wished me well um, it's incredibly appreciated um, I'm really not on social media hardly at all um, so I'm not always able to reply in a timely way but I do see all the comments and all the messages and I really appreciate it so thank you okay on to some more fun fiber related topics um, this winter I got a really amazing gift actually I should say I gave myself a really amazing gift um, I had received some money at Christmas and for my birthday and bought myself a new spinning wheel um, new to me I should say so it's a used wheel that I bought on Kijiji but it really is like brand new uh, so I got a Lendrum spinning wheel I absolutely love my new wheel she is very smooth very easy to use and what i particularly liked about the lendrum and the one that i bought it came with two uh, sizes of flyers so you get the uh, the flyer is the the part that holds the bobbin and uh, so there's there's a regular size but there's a jumbo flyer and the jumbo flyer ha can hold a really big bobbin and has also a really large orifice so it's the it's the opening that the uh, that the yarn or that the fiber goes through uh, once it's being spun and being fed onto the bobbin the great thing about a jumbo flyer is that you can spin larger uh, um, larger singles if you want and you can ply larger uh, yarn um, because of the larger orifice but also the bigger bobbin accommodates more yarn you can put a lot more yarn on it so um, so you're not dealing with a bunch of smaller bobbins and uh, so yeah it's um, it's a really great great wheel for that it's also a wheel that um, it's a double treadled wheel which means there's two pedals because of the double treadle i feel for my style of uh, spinning that i have a lot more control in terms of um, starting and stopping and also the wheel itself um, I find it easier to vary the speed of treadling and that has an impact on um, being able to spin, uh, for me anyway, a wider variety of thicknesses. So I've been having a ton of fun with my new wheel and uh, getting a lot of spinning done. The other really fun um, piece of equipment that I acquired. Uh, this one is only on a temporary basis. I borrowed a loom from my friend Jennifer uh, who's an incredible weaver and she has uh, many different looms and lent me her um, 
think it's an Ashford rigid heddle. I have just been playing and having a lot of fun with with that piece of equipment. I basically just wanted to start and kind of get my feet wet and see if I enjoy weaving uh, and you know with the thought that I might I might purchase my own uh, my own loom and the verdict is I absolutely love it. I'm kind of letting all of that marinate if there are any weavers out there and you have opinions on uh, on different uh, weaving equipment let me know but um, I will show you my finished piece once I'm done with it. It'll be kind of like a scarf or it might be a table runner. I have a very long wooden, uh, it, kind of a narrow but rare, very long kitchen table. So it might end up as a runner, I'm not sure. I just gathered up all different kinds of uh, yarns, um, slightly different thicknesses and colors I wanted something that was very much <laughs> in my usual color range so lots of um, sandy tones blue tones a little bit of uh, soft lilac some browns and really not paying attention too much to the sequence of stripes i'm i'm just trying to go for a variety and sort of have some parts that are very um, very similar in tones and then some more contrasty stripes. I'm excited to take it off. I, <laughs> I, I'm a little worried that, you know, it will be like, like this, which, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be okay with that. It's, uh, it's my first piece and I'm just kind of getting a feel for it, but uh, so far so good. I had a couple of really, really fun um, social things happen. The first was I got a chance to go to Knit City Montreal and that was in March. It was a really fun event. I went on the Sunday which was the second day of the of the market. Uh, it was a very safe event. Um, they limited the number of tickets they were selling. Everybody was wearing masks and um, yeah, it was a really, really lovely uh, event. I was very excited to see lots of friends and um, got a chance to meet some of you. I appreciate those who came up to say hello. Got some really good stuff and I will show that uh, later on in the episode, but it was, uh, it was great. It was great to get out there and see lots and lots of lovely people and lovely yarn. The best thing that uh, happened in the last little while is that during the long Easter holiday, we had a very special visitor here. Sarah of Fiber Trek, my friend who lives in Maine, came up to visit us and it was such an incredible long weekend. We just did all of the fibery things. And uh, and it was it just felt so good to really have a nice long chunk of time with one of my best friends, um, and just to have her here, have her in person, and to be able to you know just talk and watch Lord of the Rings and <laughs> eat good food, drink good wine. It was. We just had a wonderful, wonderful time. As you know, Sarah is a huge inspiration to me. She is an incredibly beautiful maker and uh, knows so much about, about fiber, about you know knitting traditions, about other textile pursuits. So it was just, it felt like such a treasure having her here and I just wanted to like, you know, extract as much information and inspiration as I could. If you want to see what we got and sort of um, some of the things that we were up to, you can watch an, a segment that Sarah recorded for her show, for her uh, channel. So 
go over to Fiber Trek, I will link the episode below and you can see and hear more about what we got up to quilting wise. I will um, feature a segment that we recorded for my uh, my channel and in it we go over some of my favorite or my some of my tried and true yarns that I go back to over and over again. This segment was inspired by a segment that Sarah filmed for her um, for her channel. I really enjoyed that segment so much and we thought wouldn't it be fun to record something similar where I would talk about my tried and trues. So stay tuned for that. The recording cut out twice. It cut out sort of halfway through and we realized so we we stopped and kind of uh, started um, recording again but unfortunately it also cut us off at the end and I didn't realize till uh, till I was reviewing the footage and Sarah had left. So unfortunately it ends a little abruptly but uh, basically you know I think we were just kind of wrapping up and and uh, sort of summarizing what uh, what tried and true yarns are for us and how you know depending on what you're making um, you know there's just so many different options out there and uh, you know different yarns serve different purposes and I think we were also encouraging you to let us know uh, in the comments below what some of your tried and true yarns are so uh, so anyway I'm sorry for the kind of a uh, bit abrupt ending you know obviously Sarah I thank you so much for coming to visit and uh, for recording that with me it was a lot of fun and I know that uh, you all will really enjoy hearing from Sarah hi Sarah hi Nicole how are you I'm good <laughs> I'm so excited to hear about your we, we've been calling it top five mm -hmm. but I think if you saw my podcast I'm Sarah Fibertrek she may yes. have already said that <laughs> we're under a little bit of a a nor'easter time crunch today. That's right, yeah. So we're, we are um, put flying a little bit by the seat of our pants. That's right. Sarah's visiting for the, she was visiting for Easter. Yeah. And it's just been the most amazing weekend. I know, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. In your In my podcast. Segment. Yeah. But, point, was I had talked a little bit about yarns that I returned to. Mm -hmm or want to, and um, and I thought it would be interesting to get Nicole's return to yarns, yeah. or tried and true, as a... That's right. Not top anything, because... No, I mean, you know, the top is like, depending on what you're making, right? Yeah. Like, um, there's yarns, there's so many different yarns, so many different fibers, so many different ways the fibers prepare that, I mean, you know, depending on what you're making, you right. might you know, choose one over the other. But there's certainly um, certain yarns that, yeah, I go to uh, over and over again. Yarns that are, you know, uh, generally more on the affordable side and things that I know are going to perform the way I right. want them to perform <clears throat> because I've used them a lot. Right. And so, yeah, so I thought I, I love the segment that you did and it really helped me discover uh, a lot of things that I haven't tried yet. And now, of course, now I really want to try. <laughs> so thanks, Sarah, yeah, for enabling me. <laughs> so hopefully I can enable some of you and maybe you. Maybe although me. you know all of these. But um, so I brought a pile of, <laughs> as you can see, very brightly, you know, yeah. the typical Nicole. Super cheerful, Nicole. I know, I know. <laughs> Maybe I'll start with what I'm wearing because mm. I'm wearing one of my all-time favorite pieces. Um, so the shawl is called the Big Star Shawl. I won't go into all the details of the patterns, although I will put them, uh, I'll put links to them down below so you can... And they're on um, Ravelry and... Yeah, some of them. I'm some not of the them. best. I mean, the patterns not are on you, Ravelry. Not you, but yeah. Yeah. And they'll be able to find the name and totally. all that. So. Exactly. Yeah. All the details. Perfect. But uh, the Big Star Shawl is a pattern by Julia Billings Woolen Flower, oh, and uh, I really love it. It's um, it's kind of a. I know I said I wouldn't talk about the pattern, but I can't <laughs> help myself. It's uh, I guess like kind of a Faroese style 
sort of mm. um, lace. It's it it's hard to see. Maybe oh, oh here oh. you can see. Yeah, there's like a beautiful diamond patterning. It's very very everyday, but. The reason why I wanted to talk about it is because it's knit in Briggs and Little. This is their sport yarn that actually has nylon in it. It is their sock yarn, but uh, you know, whatever. It's just, it, oh, it's, a great... it, it's a workhorse yarn. It's, I love the color. If I remember correctly, the color is called sea foam, and I'm always like, this is not sea foam. <laughs> It's it's like a tealy gray blue. There's a lot of gray in this. Mm. Um, it's probably over dyed on gray uh, fiber, but um, it's it's held up beautifully. It's really tough. It's my you know chuck on while I'm doing housework. If I'm cold, it's I've had it for I don't know probably like. 10 years wow, now at yeah. least I mean it's got some pills and stuff but it's so like fuzzy and um, and uh, kind of lofty that I kind of feel like it all yeah you don't really notice it with the heathered kind of feel of the yarn color right. or any of that right thing. exactly and it's such a cozy shawl and I mean the reason why I love this yarn and and all of Briggs and Little's yarns is that um, it's extremely affordable. Mm. Uh, it's made in Canada with Canadian yarns. It's, like it's my milled in Canada. Yeah, yeah that's it's over right. by. Uh, it's in New Brunswick. It's in New Brunswick. Yeah. I'm from New Brunswick, so of course <laughs> I like that. Um, they have really beautiful colors. You mm -hmm. know, um, they have a lot of heathered blends. So if you like that kind of, I mean, it's not tweedy, but it's heathery. So when you look up close, you'll see that. It's teal, but then it has some paler, um, kind of creamy bits. And in certain lights, you can even see like some red. And uh, so it, it's rich, you know, yeah. and a lot of their colors are like that. And they have a lot of different weights. So you can yes. go sport, deep, you know, worsted. Yep. The yep. whole thing. So. Yeah. So, and I've knit a ton with, like I've made many, many sweaters yeah. with their yarn and it's just a, it's a great workhorse. It has and, a lot of structure. Yeah, and if you're American, like the Canadian uh, exchange rate mm -hmm. is really favorable. Yeah. So it's affordable for Canadians, but it's even more so <laughs> for Americans. And I, I will mention that there's there are other mills in Canada that produce yarn that's very similar, mm -hmm. like Custom Woolen Mills out, out west. Their yarns are very, very similar uh, in sort of um, in price point and in quality. And so if you're looking, if you're, if you live more on the West Coast, that's another mm. uh, place that offers really, really lovely, lovely yarn. Nice. Yeah. Um, so my next one is another kind of heathered yarn. And this is yarn by Alice Starmore. Mm. So it's her Hebridean. This one is the three ply. So it's kind of a DK light worsted. Is it truly a three ply? It is. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a, a woolen spun. This mm -hmm. is also woolen spun. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, um, I've made a bonny, which is uh, an Orlans. No, sorry. This is the, um, it's not the bonny. It's the... Uh, the worsted weight version or the DK weight version it's um the oh my goodness the name of the pattern escapes me I'll oh, put it strict. I'll put it down no 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 it's Arlen Suche, oh, okay. so it's it is Ted Besh but she has two like oh, what's the name of this pattern anyway you. We'll look it up. Um, but it's a very, very basic raglan uh, cardigan and it fits really beautifully. But the reason why I love this yarn mm. is that it appears to be kind of a sagey, greeny gray. But up close, you can see, so this colorway is called Pebble Beach. And I think you can see that it has a million colors in it. It's got blue and yellow and green and browns. It's really, really beautiful. And yeah, this yarn has held up incredibly well. This is another sweater I've worn a ton, a ton, a ton. It's, it's a really easy to wear. It's warm and light. Um, and it, yeah, it's just, yeah. 
really, really gorgeous. I've done some color work with her, the same base, but the two ply. Yeah, the... I was gonna say, I've done, I've worked with her two ply. Mm, and, and it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it makes beautiful, beautiful color yeah. work. Very similar to the next yarn I'm gonna right. talk about. Um, so yeah, it comes in a lot oh, of gorgeous yeah. colors. It's all, all these heathered blends and she's just such a incredible master of color, right? Yeah. Like it's Alistair a very Moore. moody line. Like it's yeah. just got a lot of, I don't know. It's yeah. very evocative of landscape. Yes. And yeah. I mean, all of her color names are like, this is Pebble Beach because you know, it's kind of that Atlantic beach, uh, like moody, moody mm. landscape. A lot of her colors are the names of like mosses and lichens and yeah, things like birds that. So, and, birds. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, uh, so I really, I love her yarn and you know, you would think it would be like very expensive, but mm. it's actually not that bad. Not bad. Um, and you know, just a, a really lovely experience. It's, it's maybe a little softer than Shetland. I don't know. Yeah, this Similar. feels this feels like nice and crisp to me. Mm -hmm. Like again, it's it's a it's a a heavier weight than the the four ply. Right. <clears throat> so, right. But yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, that's my kind of yarn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not like it's definitely not merino feeling. It's it's no, got, it's not. It's spongy and like velvety or squishy or right, anything like that. Right. Right. Um, so. Similar, like I said, to uh, Shetland yarn. So, of course, I had to show some color work because I love color work so <laughs> I love much. This. So beautiful. <laughs> and so, this is my Yell by Marie Wallen. And um, the yarn is a mix. So, it's a mix of Jameson's of Shetland. So, they're, uh, they're a jumper weight um, uh, yarn. Uh, the Spindrift. Right. And then uh, it also has Jameson and Smith. There's some of that too. And a little bit of Rowan um, um, Scottish Tweed yeah. and their fingering, which was also, uh, I think it was, it was Shetland wool. Uh, and, you know, like for color work, can't you beat can't it. beat it. It comes in like a gazillion colors and Again, heathered. I mean, there's there's a theme, right? I love heathery <laughs> oh. blended yarns, dyed in the wool and then blended. So so basically, they're dying, um, they're dying batches of fiber right. in different colors, and then, and then they're like making a, a cake batter right. <laughs> with and the different colors, it. and. And sometimes you can find really surprising colors, like, you know, like I like with Pebble, Pebble Beach, you know, it reads a certain way from afar. And when you look at it up close, mm. it has like a lot of really bright colors, but it's not, it doesn't read bright, um, you know, overall. So, you know, super durable, super light, yeah. super warm. Applicable to so many pieces and yeah. garments. Yeah and situations so yeah. like I know I talked about in mine like I mean this is not um a, a precious yarn to me so I would wear this in a canoe totally. and like yeah out in the woods absolutely and so you know that's something that like but it can look very sophisticated you could put it into mm -hmm. a sweater and wear it out to dinner so I yeah. like that it's got a lot of versatility as far as yeah. applicability and and it's surprisingly durable like I oh, think yeah because you know, a lot of times you are uh, working color work, you've got this double layer, mm. right? And so I find, you know, like all the all of the color work stuff I've, I've yeah. met in Shetland, you know, sometimes like the cuffs and stuff will get a little, but you know, that's what that's, mending's for. Yeah. And um, it's just, yeah, it, it's just beautiful. And again, it's not like break the bank. Nope. Um, you know, usually when you're doing color work, yeah, there are, there can be a lot of colors involved, but you're only needing a very small amount of each color. It's really like your body that you will right. need a, a good quantity of, but that's why sometimes I think it's, you know, if you find a friend that you can, mm. if you're going to knit a Marie Wallen or a large color work, but, and you have similar taste or ideas that you can buy, you know, together the skein and then you can split it and trade and things like that. Right. So not that that happens for me where I am, although that's not <laughs> well, true. I... You did send me a <laughs> Um But I, and I definitely find when you use a little bit, well, then you're going to knit a hat and you can knit mittens. So yeah. um, 
Yeah, so I I think that um, this is a great mm-hmm. workhorse return to yarn. And I mean, yarn, the beauty is that it can be in your, as long as your your stash is protected right. from, you know, the elements yep. and the and nature, the moss. Uh, you know, you, you have these little bits in your stash and, and uh, the magic of doing color work and incorporating a lot of color is that it really, it you end up with a very rich looking yes. fabric. And, you know, I get a lot of questions about, like, what colors did I use and what order am I yell? And and because I, I totally changed the colors, it's not a one-to-one. Right. It's not like, well, you know, the pattern calls for this type of blue and I substituted this color. I really... I kind of changed, like, sometimes that blue comes back in the pattern, but I might have chosen another color. Right. So it's very difficult for me. I just kind of did it as I went. It's right. kind of like, you know, <clears throat> choose your own adventure type of color work. <laughs> so, um, but I really encourage people to just try and it's not hard to undo if you, if no, you don't. It holds up well. You know, if you, that. if you knit a row and you're like, oh, I really can't see that or the contrast is off. Just, you know, or you can duplicate stitch on top after right. if your whole thing's finished and you're like, oh, that just that one line really bugs me. Yep. Just duplicate, duplicate stitch over it. Right. And the other. Okay. Take two. Sorry. As usual. <laughs> we're just having technical difficulties. <laughs> I think what I was saying was that you were saying, you know, like make sure you have a nice contrast of light darks and mediums or right. or just you could use or, that as a guide right and I was just saying yes absolutely uh but I don't follow she always didn't. the follow the <laughs> rules so you'll see that like there's a lot of like very light sort of not super high contrasty bits here that's because that's what I wanted I wanted right. kind of a sun bleached effect but that's really that's the fun of it it's right. just playing trying pick colors that you like and then yeah, go for it and just yeah try it, you know. Um, so my next yarn is Lopi. Love or, us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've got two examples here um, of uh, I think these are both Alafos Lopi. So mm-hmm. basically Icelandic. Uh, I mean I've used Plotu Lopi, I've used Let Lopi, I've used their Einband, oh, yeah. which is their so kind of lacy. Does no. that have a soap blend in it? No, nope. nope. it's okay. 100% uh, Icelandic wool, but it's just a very fine, um, like, it's fingering mm. But um, these are both Let Lopi. Um, this is the Bregna sweater with a beautiful herringbone uh, pattern at the yeah. top there. I love this sweater. This is my, like, going in the woods kind of sweater. Um, and then uh, this, it, so I find uh, Icelandic, of course, amazing for color work. Yep. That's what, you know, the, the, they too the have Lopa a lot of, Pesa, yep. the traditional. Um, lots of colors. Lots of colors. They have a lot of beautiful natural mm-hmm. colors. Uh, you know, just all the ranges of browns and grays and all the things that make our <laughs> hearts sing like, like this guy. Um, and there's a little, I've thrown in a bit of gold in there, but, um, yeah, low P. I mean, it, again, super light, super warm, um, you know, durable, not the softest, but it, it, I like to say it has a sensation when you wear it. Like it it has a, yeah, you can feel it. (laughs) But um, honestly, I actually find that if I'm overheating, it feels itchier. Mm-hmm. But if I'm cold, like if it's cold outside, I'm very comfortable in low pee. And like for even for a hat or a scarf. This is the Weatherman? The Weatherman cardigan. Yeah. Uh, it's a, actually, I think it's designed the as pol- a pullover, pullover. And I just steeped it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll link down to the yeah. pattern, but Upside yeah, I, again, it, like it's a great workhorse yarn and it's very affordable. Yeah. Um, and it has a, it just has a lot of attributes of fiber that make it, you know, it's the dual coat. Mm-hmm. I talked about this in my podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it's just, um, I don't know. You feel like you're kind of participating in something bigger than yourself when you wear this because Icelandic sheep and all the, the history, history that it. goes into it and yeah. of course the landscape you can kind of 
it's it's a transportative experience. Totally. Icelandic yarn is for me. Absolutely. Yep. And I mean you if you go to Iceland, if you have the chance to go to yeah. Iceland like I did, you know, many years ago, uh it's everywhere. Yeah. And and you know, people it's not just like a folkloric thing that some people wear like you see people wearing, uh, you know, Icelandic yarn, like everywhere right, you go. Right. People are wearing wool, and it is it is a garment that is suited to their <laughs> yeah. weather, and it's suited to the weather we live in too. Right. right? So, uh, so it's just it's just a it's beautiful a yarn. and beautiful it's yarn. affordable, affordable, and accessible. Accessible. It's easy to find. You know. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's it's just a great yarn. I've been knitting with it since the beginning of my. Knitting. Me like too. probably so like 30 tr years yeah. so i'm like i think i'm at 20 years so <laughs> so um and i i will always yep knit I'll, with this I, my I love, yeah i have tons of it and, yeah. and it's like it's sort of like a shetland in that you know you you gather up all these little leftovers and you can make uh, right. a beautiful color work uh with lots of different colors and it just yeah it's oh. it does not go to waste in a stash no it no is, no no it's yeah. it's amazing and then my last one is, this is a little harder to come mm -hmm. across. It's the Honneur Oc Air New Tiden Yarn. And I never knit with that. So. No, yeah. no, but. I will. You yeah. have some. <laughs> have so. <laughs> um, so this, uh, oh, so this beautiful. is a very special yarn. It's, it's a single ply, um, unspun yarn. Yep. Uh, it's a small mill in Sweden, Honneur uh, Oc Air. And they uh, basically use all different types of breeds of uh, sheep that are grown in Sweden. It's right. all Swedish uh, fiber. Not the breeds are not necessarily like all Swedish right. breeds, although most of them are. Um, this yarn, this uh, yarn is actually one colorway. It was uh, a special blend that she did for her patrons. It was called the Birthday Blend, and it's got a lot of colors. So this is like a, way more colorful than the majority of the yarn. Like if you if you buy a plate of it. Um, there is a lot of color variation, but y usually it's a little more blended. This was like a special blend that she did that ends up being a little more variegated. Because it too is dyed in the wool and then re-blended yes. and then put through the... Exactly. And that's really or what I like yeah. best is those yeah, kinds of dyed in the wool yep. uh, blends. And I mean, like, look at the colors. They're so beautiful. Like all very natural. I held this one double. Um, mm. so you really, yeah, so it, it would have been even more stripey had I knit it single. Uh, so you've got more soft kind of transitions with this one, yeah, but I prefer that. I mm -hmm. like it. And the pattern, I don't remember at all. I will put it, it's, it's a very lovely, it's hard to see, but it's got like garter sections mm -hmm. and then plain stockinette sections. It's, you know, my typical giant shawl with yeah. lots of garter. <laughs> it's so the different um the different blends will have different levels of uh softness and lightness um not lightness, thickness right. uh or density, density uh based on what is blended in. I you know, I find it quite soft uh in general like most of the I've bought quite a bit of it and most of it I find quite soft, but it it does have a wool yeah, it's feel. gonna have like it's gonna have a little bit of the same feel as Lopi. Mm -hmm. It's gonna have, I mean, because it's originating from those similar. Yeah, and because it's fleeces. and because it's unspun, it's got a ton of halo. Like it's yeah. always very very fuzzy. Um, I've knit garments, and you definitely do get pills, mm -hmm. but you get the big like yeah. you know those like oh stand out like you just kind of like easily pick off. And once you've kind of picked off, once you've gone through like yeah. depilling it once or twice, it's it, kind of done. It's done, yeah. yeah. Because everything, all the fibers, sort of, kind of get more acquainted right. with each it other. It gets like a like a fold look. Yeah, it gets a soft right. You know, but it's still beautifully yeah. drapey and and really. Uh, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't seem to get stiff. No, like no. I mean, yeah. you could probably you easily could felt, felt it. it. Be beautiful. <laughs> it would be beautiful, but. I really love, um, I love her yarn. Um, the other special thing is, so they come out with collections, 
you know, every like two months or so. And so they'll usually be like four or five colors or six colors in, in that collection. And that color doesn't come back. So right. So if that, you yeah. love a color, although, you know, there's, there's, she has a palette that mm -hmm. is very her. And so if you love those kinds of colors, you'll get something will come that will remind there. you of that. Exactly. But, um, but it is very special yarn. Yeah. Not, not super expensive though. Uh, I mean, you know, not like, not like, um, Lopi. Briggs and Little Lopi. and not as, yeah. yeah, not as inexpensive as Loki, but it's not like Brick the Bank. Um, it does pay. come fairly large plates. So yeah. I, so it's you're buying 100, gram 100 grams. Yeah. And generally, uh, for a sweater, like, four to like depending on how mm. big a sweater you want to make but like 500 grams would be plenty for right. like a sweater for me um unless i wanted to make it super oversized right. so uh you know you're buying like four to five plates um it's it's not it's not yeah. bad actually no. Um, so those are yeah i'm so excited yarns. i'm really glad that we kind of were able to do something different so people can kind of see the breadth of yeah. where you can go. Yeah. Although we both did Target Lopi and the Jameson. So <laughs> yeah, there's you're definitely gonna find overlap. overlap. <laughs> um, but that's the way, you know, I mean, like this, those are, like we said, tried and true. Mm -hmm. um, we've been knitting with them since the beginning. Our yeah. first, my couple of my first projects were Lopi. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And, and definitely I've been using Briggs and Little since yes. the beginning. And I think I used Briggs and Little yeah. way back when. <laughs> So, yeah, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's nice to see them come up and have that that they kind of stand and yeah, yeah. they stand the test of time. time. And I feel like this this is the same. It's something that I will probably continue to knit with until they, you know, uh, hopefully right. they'll continue to produce it. Um, but yeah, they're they're they they all share a lot of like similarities mm -hmm. in that they're. Generally, what I like, <laughs> woolen spun, lofty, fuzzy, uh, warm, light. You you have, sometimes you, you really, um, you favor like a more sort of, um, like a worsted prep. Worsted, yeah. But you do a lot more like very physical, like outdoor stuff where you want that right. durability. Yep, and um, I like the look of, and I like, like personally I like to spin worsted. Mm -hmm. So I love the multiple plies, round yarn, and mm -hmm. I love the long wool breeze. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I have an affinity mm -hmm. for that. Um, and I do too, yeah. but it's funny how, like, we there's so much overlap in what we love, but at the same time... Yeah, you, you know... And it's cool, because yeah. then, you know, you'll show me something that's, you know, beautiful cables that are super defined, because you have knit it with a very round, kind of smooth yarn, and I'll be like, yeah, that is... So besides playing with my new wheel and, uh, and my friend's loom, I have been doing <laughs> quite a lot of knitting, as you can imagine, over these last uh, several months. Um, and I have some finished objects to share with you. Uh, when I last recorded in, uh, in December, I was working on a cardigan in some uh, La Bien Aimée's Cori worsted yarn. And I frogged what I had, what I was working on. It was a, a cabled cardigan, and it was a very beautiful pattern. But I felt that it just wasn't showing up very well in the color that my uh, my Cory worsted is. It's a it's a very dark navy blue, and you just couldn't really see the cables. So. Um, so instead I opted for a very simple, <laughs> very everyday garter uh, cardigan. I knit the Charlotte cardigan and this is a pattern by Carrie Bostick Hogue and it is just a really really simple raglan cardigan that I, I ended up putting buttons just at the top I made it quite long and uh, so it just um, this yarn drapes really beautifully so it, it just kind of um, it just slightly opens in the front and it, it's very very it's I think it's very elegant looking um, the modifications I made I ended up knitting 
quite a large size. Uh, it's a bit of a theme for me lately and I need to rectify this, but I pretty much always choose a size that's too big for me. And in this case, I didn't mind because because the yarn is so, uh, so drapey, it kind of uh, still gives me a very, um, like a, like, it doesn't look oversized, it, it drapes in a certain way that makes it look like it, it fits well. The only thing is that the sleeves, when I got to the final, um, the final decreases on the sleeves, uh, it was still, you know, the sleeve was very, very open at the, at the bottom. And, um, because I made full length sleeves, I don't tend to like a very open sleeve because it kind of drags in things and I find it difficult when I'm doing stuff around the house to have these kind of big open sleeves. So uh, rather than uh, rip out and try and sort of do more severe decreases on my sleeves, I just did a very rapid decrease at the end and then knit the cuff regularly so I ended up with a with a puffier sleeve which I do like <laughs> I know it's probably uh, it was really really in style and it's probably now maybe going out of style but I don't really care a lot about that <laughs> um, I, I really I really do like these uh, very sweet uh, puffy sleeves and especially with this this gorgeous fabric that this yarn gives it just it's very 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 blousey and and uh, very fluid so I've I've really enjoyed wearing this I've worn it a lot I put some vintage uh, shell buttons and um, yeah the yarn it's a it's a very pricey yarn and so I I would probably not knit with it again because of the price it's it's um it's definitely a luxury that I don't think is one that I could um, that I could afford uh, on a regular basis the other thing I will say is that it did pill really really badly at the beginning and uh, I was really quite concerned. I was really sad that it's it's a very um, a very hairy yarn, a very uh, fluffy yarn, and uh, a lot of that fluff, you know, ended up very quickly as pills. So I ended up purchasing an electric sh uh, sweater shaver, and because I found it very difficult. Um, to uh, get rid of the pills just by picking them off. There, there was a lot of pilling. So I invested in uh, one of those little, um, it was actually a rechargeable electric shaver, and it really did a wonderful job of getting rid of the pills and also of kind of trimming that extra floofiness. So it hasn't really started pilling again. I've, uh, I, sort of fixed it uh, several months ago. I, I kind of de-pilled it and they don't seem to be coming back. So I'm, I'm quite encouraged by that. I'm really happy because um, I am somebody who really I'm quite bothered by something when it's super pilly, uh, especially when it's a very expensive yarn. It's sort of very disappointing if it ends up looking ratty. So um, so I'm really glad that that was the solution and that I can wear it now and, and feel very, uh, very proud of it and, and very happy with the, the fabric that I ended up with. The next thing I finished, well, started and finished, I should say, since I last recorded, is a shawl. It's called the Hawthorne Tincture Shawl. Here it is. Very beautiful very simple um, mix of garter, lace, and some textural stitches. The shawl was designed by Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery here on YouTube. And um, 
I when I saw her version of it it was done in a color very similar to this and uh, I absolutely fell in love with her version I uh, just thought it was so so lovely red is a color that I um, don't wear a ton but I really do like especially this kind of um, sort of rich red that has um, has more of a it, it does have blue in it 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 is it tends more towards a cooler tone or like a wine rather than like an orangey red or a corally red and I find that that color really suits me and suits a lot of the other colors that I wear so you know charcoal gray and navy and that kind of thing uh, now hawthorns are um, and a hawthorn is a type of tree and it produces a fruit um, so these uh, bright red uh, little fruits that look like miniature apples they're really quite small and uh, I've actually been <laughs> eating hawthorn for a long time. If you pay attention to the beginning of uh, of my episodes, the little uh, the little sort of intro reel, you might notice that um, there is a shelf with all these different um, spices and tinctures, and one of the little bottles has a heart shaped uh, sticker on it, and it says heart sprinkles. Well. This is a blend of cinnamon, ginger, uh, cardamom, and hawthorn powder. And it's, uh, so this recipe was uh, developed by Rosemary Gladstar, and she calls it heart sprinkles because, or sprinkles for the heart or something like that, because hawthorn is uh, known to be a very good herb for your heart. I mostly sprinkle it on my oatmeal in the morning and uh, you know and so the fact that this shawl was red like the hawthorn berry but also red like a heart and I you know consume hawthorn berry powder on my morning oatmeal. I don't know. I just felt like <laughs> all of that made sense in terms of making myself a warm hug of a hawthorn tincture shawl. The yarn I use for the shawl is uh, Sonder Yarns Sunday Morning DK. Now the pattern does call for a worsted weight yarn. I think it's knit with uh, Durerum Natra Gilead. Um, but I have this yarn in my stash and the color just was perfect. And so what I ended up doing is I cast on the same amount of stitches, but I ended up doing quite a lot more garter rows at the end to end up with a shawl that I felt was um, similar in size. And uh, I really, I do love the way it turned out. I like that the yarn the DK yarn is a bit finer, so it just ends up being, for me, a little easier to wear. I find sometimes worsted weight shawls are, they're great for wrapping up, but they can be a little more difficult to wear sort of as a, as a scarf. And I do wear my shawls a lot as sort of as neckwear in the winter. So, um, so I'm really happy that I sort of made that diff that change and used a, a slightly thinner yarn. The uh, Sunday morning yarn is absolutely beautiful. I've talked about it before. It's a blend of uh, BFL and uh, Massam or Masham. I'm not. I'm never sure how to pronounce that but it is, um, it's a very lovely woolly blend that still has quite a bit of softness and it has a lovely luster because of the BFL. The color of this one is five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> the textures also end up looking a little bit like little fruits. So um, just all in all, a really great project. Thank you Anushka for your lovely, lovely pattern. 
that's sort of it for finished projects. I did knit a few little things here and there as gifts and um, I made myself several pairs of socks but they're all in the wash. They are just vanilla socks in any case so there's not a lot to report there. Um, a few projects that I've shown before uh, but have not progressed a ton. Um, one of them is my uh, orchid cardigan, a pattern by Julia Wilkins. This cardigan is, um, is a brioche cardigan and I kind of stalled on it. I don't know why because um, it's, it really is super, super easy. One color brioche and um, I, I do love the way it's looking so far. I absolutely love on the sides here the, um, the way that the increases happen just love how that looks in brioche. So I'm almost done the side increases. It's a slightly unusual shape for me because uh, the body starts a little more narrow and, and kind of does increase up a little bit. So I did start with a size that was sort of big enough to accommodate my hips. So I think it will end up being quite roomy, but um, but in that really lovely squishy brioche fabric, I think it'll be really, really pleasant to wear. The yarn I'm using is Hinterland Yarns. It's 70% Rambouillet and then 30% homegrown alpaca. And so the, the yarn is grown and spun and um, I was gonna say dyed in Canada, but this this base is not dyed. I think it's all uh, naturally colored. The color is really beautiful. It's it's uh, I think it's called honey. Yeah, it's called honey, and it it does have sort of a very lovely warm. It's cream, but it's got a very lovely warm uh, glow to it. So uh, that's gonna be just delicious. I really want to kind of get going on this a little more. Uh, I want to work on it more assiduously so I can so I can wear it. The other project that I have shown you in the past and I'm still working on is my Brio Garter Split Shawl by Stephen West. So it is a, a shawl that has uh, wedges of two color garter alternating with uh, a triangle of two color brioche in the middle. So you've got sort of this side and uh, this side. It's a completely reversible shawl, which is lovely. And uh, of course, given that it's brioche, it's just got the most beautiful feeling to it. Very squishy. The yarn I'm using is a mix of um, the blue is Rowan Felted Tweed, this really pretty sort of faded denim blue. And then the contrast color is in some tree frog alpaca, 100% alpaca yarn, which I've had in my stash forever. I recently cast on a new project with some yarn that I picked up at uh, the uh, at uh, Knit City Montreal. The yarn is by a new to me dyer, um, Le Pastel Club, and uh, they're based in Montreal. They have two bases, and the one I chose is their Gris base. It's a um, it's a hundred percent Dorset base. Um, Dorset is a sheep that is very, very commonly grown here in Canada. And so I think this uh, fleece comes from Kamouraska in Quebec. And it's a gray based yarn. So the, um, so for this line of yarns, um, the dyer over dyes this gray base with some really beautiful jewel tones. And I picked this color, which is called Juin, which means June, and it's really funny. It's it's a totally chameleon color because uh, at the show it looked like a very bronzy brown to me. 
when I got it outside, I could see that it was a mossy green with some golden tones to it. On screen, it definitely looks very golden. So depending on what light you're seeing this yarn in, it, it has a different kind of, has a lot of different um, shifts. It's a t the type of color that um, is slightly out of my usual palette, but I do really enjoy goldeny, mustardy types of yellows and greens. So, um, so I really, I really do absolutely love it, even if it's not quite the color I thought I was buying. Um, so that's the yarn. It's a. Uh, it might be listed as a worsted. I feel it is definitely knitting up more uh, like an Aran. Dorset is a is a fiber that has a very very um, dense crimp, and it it's sort of uh, multi directional. So you end up with yarn that is very very. Um, it's it's got a lot of. Um, spring to it it's it's um it's squishy but it it's firm and um it's it's a yarn that i really a, a the type of fiber i really enjoy uh briggs and little is probably also a lot of dorset because so much dorset is grown in canada and um, i feel like this might even be spun at the briggs and little mill it, ha it just has that that look to me but the um, but it's really really lovely and um, I just want to mention quickly so I, I'm, I'm knitting a new cardigan but I, I did want to mention this absolutely beautiful project bag that I'm holding my new project in the bag was a gift from a very very generous and beautiful maker her, um, the, the bag was made by a company called Wildwood Stitches. Here's the little card that came with it. And uh, Harriet sent me, um, sent me a lovely note saying that she had a bag that she, um, she wanted to send me, which is incredibly <laughs> generous and, um, I just love the natural theme of the fabric and what I especially love is that it is um, made with Harris Tweed, which you know I'm a big fan of. So, um, and uh, it's, it's made just so beautifully with some gorgeous matching uh, lining and the Harris Tweed logo, leather straps, Really, these bags are just uh, such high quality, and I very much recommend Harriet's bags. The cardigan I'm knitting out of my new yarn is a pattern that I've had in my queue for a long time. It's called the Wheat Sheaves Cardigan, and it's by Elizabeth McRae, something like that. I will put a link below of course um, so it's called the wheat sheaves cardigan because it has this really lovely lace detail and it runs all around the collar and along the bottom and it will also be at the cuff it's a drop shoulder design with this kind of shawl collar and it it is a, a shape that I really, really love wearing. It's very, very similar to my Yell, and I just find that that style of uh, cardigan really, really sits really comfortably on me. I think I did knit the, I knit the fourth size, and I really should have gone down one size. This is gonna be quite generous but I, I don't really mind. I do, I do like the way it's sitting on the body and um, it's, it's just gonna be very roomy and comfortable and it will, 
it will stay closed, which I also really like. So it's knitting up super, super fast. I think I'm using six millimeter needles. So, uh, and the lace was a very, very easy to memorize chart. So just a pleasure, a pleasure to make and I can't wait to have it finished. I think this will be so beautiful to wear in the fall. So apart from that lovely yarn from the Pastel Club, I picked up a few other goodies at, um, at Knit City. I, of course, had to go to the Sonder Yarns booth and pick up some more Sunday morning. This time it's the four ply, which I've knit with before. Last full episode I recorded, I showed off a scarf shawl that I had knit in, um, in their cover to cover colorway. I picked up enough to um, make a shawl with, um, with <clears throat> again, their four ply. This color is called Fresh Sheets and this one is called Offline. So Offline is a natural uh, oatmeal-y gray, and there is quite a lot of beautiful um, variation in the, in the creams and the grays that are in the, in the natural fleece. And then Fresh Sheets is the same, that same base, but over dyed in a sagey uh, duck egg, very pale blue, and I really love this color. I love them together. Um, I also picked up some uh, naturally dyed yarn. So I've got three skeins of this yarn by Cabin Boy Knits, and um, it's a worsted 75 BFL Massam, so um, same yarn blend as this yarn in a worsted weight, and um, it's dyed with dandelion. And it is very, very pretty, uh, kind of um, just a pale, pale yellow. And again, the base of the yarn has some grays and browns, so you just get a really lovely sort of heathered effect. And I have three skeins, so that would probably be enough for a shawl, a cowl, something like that, or maybe a color work on a sweater. That, that actually might be what, what it ends up being, but I just, um, I love naturally dyed yarn and I love supporting Canadian Canadian dyers, so uh, that was a, a lovely purchase. I also went to the um, to the Honey Pie Hives and Herbals booth, and actually they are um, they actually ha I've been familiar with that that company because they make um, natural body products, and I've been buying their products for a long, long time. I, I love their soaps and lip balms and that kind of thing. But they had a booth at Knit City and they had some naturally dyed yarn. This is a BFL and Gotland blend and it's Ontario wool. And this one was uh, dyed with uh, buckthorn berries. And this one was dyed with uh, sandalwood. So you've got this very soft, sort of peachy color and a very, very soft, creamy yellow. And I thought that uh, seeing as this is spun like a bulky low pea, it would be really lovely to have this um, in some, uh, some kind of Icelandic yoke color work. And in fact, when Sarah was visiting, she brought me some of her yarn, actually from her sheep. Um, and uh, so she brought me two colors, uh, a natural white and a natural gray. And uh, I cannot believe <laughs> that I have yarn from Sarah's actual, uh, you know, from her sheep. And uh, I just think that, you know, a sweater 
with these very soft and gentle colors would be really stunning. So I think that might be what I have to do with these beautiful skeins. Of course, with my new wheel, I couldn't resist bringing home a little bit of fiber. These little, <laughs> these very sweet bundles are some East Friesen. Um, it's Quebec fiber that was dyed by Les Arts Textiles du Témiscouata. And um, there's, there's this very soft gray and this ultra soft and delicate pink. Um, I don't know if the colors are listed. This is mix number nine and mix number 14. I also picked up some beautiful comb top from Les Belles Bouclettes. They are a mohair farm, so they raise Angora goats, and this is a blend of 75% mohair and 25% wool. And so uh, I'm excited to either incorporate this by blending it with uh, with some other fiber or maybe just uh, spinning it on its own, but it's it's so soft. It's it's really like a cloud, and um, I'm I'm excited to spin with mohair because I've I've never done that before. Well, I think that's going to be it for me today. I will leave you with some footage that I took about a week ago uh, walking in the woods. At that time, it was still quite cold, and spring had not fully shown up yet. So um, I'm actually curious to see what the woods are gonna look like this weekend. I expect it will be very different. It's been quite warm and sunny all week. But um, anyway, wherever you are, I hope that you are enjoying a beautiful spring. And I also just wanted to say again, thank you for all of the love and support that you've shown me over these last few months. Thank you for hanging in there. And I really look forward to coming back and chatting with you again. In the meantime, take good care. Bye. to Pine Grove, a trail in sort of the agricultural green belt around Ottawa. The pines were planted uh, by humans and so you see really nice tidy rows of, of pines here. But like all things that, uh, that are left to their own devices, all natural things. It has filled out nicely with all sorts of biodiversity. This time of year is still pretty quiet uh, in terms of plant activity. Most of the green you'll see is evergreens, uh, some hardy ferns that somehow managed to keep their color in the winter. Lots of uh, winter green in the understory. We're not seeing a lot of buds on the trees, although there are certain species that have catkins and um, definitely the buds are getting uh, swollen. So there is definitely hope that spring is on the way. I walked through some marshier areas and there I could hear the spring peepers. That is a very, very lovely spring sound as well as hearing the red-winged blackbirds. And they go, uh, they go away in the winter. They migrate. So when you hear them in the spring, you know that summer is not too far off.
As often happens when I come out, especially during these almost in-between times when, you know, it's no longer winter, but spring is not in full swing yet, it's easy to think that there's not a lot going on. When I first started my walk, I was saying, yeah, there's not a lot coming out yet. You know, we don't have leaves or, you know, any of the woodland spring flowers um, like bloodroot or wild ginger. Certainly the trilliums aren't out yet. But um, as almost <laughs> always happens, nature really surprises me when I take the time to really look closely and turns out there's lots going on you know I saw so much <laughs> so much life coming up fiddleheads and some yellow flowers maybe Colt's foot saw some beautiful red uh, inflorescences I think they might be maple saw lots of pussy willows and catkins that um, that have their own kind of muted or subtle beauty and it really reminds me that uh, a lot of a lot of the beautiful things in this world are not necessarily obvious and you really have to slow down and just kind of take it in and and be mindful be really present and then all of a sudden there's all these hidden treasures everywhere and I feel very grateful that I can come here and take this in. I'm really lucky.